Shoot your arrows. Cooper Cup walks it out of the air and gives the Rams the lead. Robert Wood, touchdown. LA. Dog goes crashing into the end zone. Aaron Donald almost beat the football there. Corey Littleton, have yourself a day. Picked off. Marcus Peters. Coming off the edge. And Ryan will be wrapped up by Clay Matthews. Everett in stride. Wow. Franklin Myers gets his hand down there. Leno got a hand on it. Did he pick it? He did! Racing down the sideline is a key to lead. Gurley for MVP! Touchdown LA! Picked off by John Johnson. Well, Dante Fowler, who is able to get to free. Greg Zerline sends the Rams to the Super Bowl! Oh! LA wow. will play for the Lombardi! Welcome back, guys, to another Downtown Rams podcast. It's episode 183. I'm your host, Jake Ellenbogen, here with Alexis Kraft. And, of course, uh, two prospects that will be joining the show, part of our draft season coverage. Um, we have Darwin Thompson running back, Utah State, coming on, as well as Dylan Mabin from Fordham. He is a cornerback that you need to keep an eye on. So those two are coming on the show. Hope you guys enjoy. That's going to be the podcast. And uh, let us know what you think. We'll be back soon. All right, guys, joining the show, we have Utah State running back Darwin Thompson. How's it going, man? Thanks so much for stopping by. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, of course. We're so excited to get to talk to you and to have you on the show and to get this thing started off. Uh, I'm just curious, how old were you when you started playing football and kind of what got you into it in the first place? To be honest, I can't remember when I started just because I was young. Like When I came out the womb, my parents had me in the Oakland Raiders uniform. <laughs> it was just like from there on, I just had a football in my hand. It's awesome. Yeah, no, I, I can imagine. So you kind of stole my thunder on the question, or at least I think you did, because you said Oakland Raiders uniform. So I imagine my next question of favorite NFL player growing up is probably going to be an Oakland Raider. Uh, but who was your uh, favorite NFL player growing up? Favorite NFL player growing up was actually Barry Sanders. Ah. That, I mean, my parents, my dad is originally from Oklahoma, so he watched Oklahoma State growing up, and my uncle played at Oklahoma State. So it was, it was just good for me to watch Oklahoma State and know that uh, I have a chance of playing there because I ended up moving to Oklahoma. We were originally from California. We ended up moving to Oklahoma, and that's who I grew up idolizing was Barry Sanders. Yeah, he certainly was a good player to uh, look up to and to be a fan of, that's for sure. And, and so you mentioned, um, you know, the kind of Oklahoma connection, but uh, what made you choose um, to attend Utah State to play football? <laughs> it's just crazy how it all happened. So I, was, I played in Juco, and my O-line coach here at Utah State was from Oklahoma. My head coach was from Oklahoma. He was from Salisaw, Oklahoma. The line coach was from Coweta, Oklahoma. The D.C. at the time was from Ufala, Oklahoma. And so once I got out of here and I took the visit, I mean, it was just easy for me. And then I met the strength coach. Once I met the strength coach, it was like, oh, he blew all every other school out the water. I want to be at Utah State because Dave was going to make me a better player. And he did that just within that semester. He took my games to the next level. That's awesome. You know, we always like to hear, you know, where you came from and why. Um, obviously, we know because, you know, Utah State right now is kind of part of that title. You know, Utah State running back, and soon it'll be uh, insert NFL team here running back. Um, you know, just real quick, I want to get your thoughts on, you know, for upcoming, you know, potential recruits and whatnot. Um, what would you say to them if, you know, they were considering Utah State and they're having a hard time making a decision of which school to go to? I mean, if you're looking for something different, I mean, it's not not too many people who are recruited to Utah State that are living in Utah. So, like, it's a whole different atmosphere and a different culture background of people uh, if you're looking to grow as a person Utah is definitely a place to be just to get you out of your comfort zone 
Um, me being from Oklahoma, traveling all the way to Utah, it's snow and mountains and a whole different religion that I've never been around. So it helped me grow as a person, learn, and taught me how to talk to different people. For sure. And, and I'm sure you have many memories um, from attending Utah State and playing football there. But do you have a favorite uh, memory in particular or favorite uh, game that you played in during your career? Uh, oh, yeah, Michigan State. I mean, we had them on the ropes. We should have won that game like every other game. But Michigan State, the first game of the season. And, I mean, Michigan State at that time had a lot of hype around their name. And, I don't think uh, nobody thought we would come into their house and give them around for that money. But that's probably the uh, biggest or the best memory I had at Utah State other than the off-season grinding with my brothers and they'll be lifelong brothers. I mean, I played one year, but we, we struggled together, just grinding together. It was It was great. Yeah, of course. And, you know, you talk about Michigan State. I mean, that's a pretty – that's a big program. Um, mm-hmm. So I want to ask you your thoughts on, you know, who – if you could potentially even list one. I know it's hard to narrow it down. But who's the toughest player you went up against in college? Toughest player? Hmm. I really like Joe Bocci's game from Michigan State, the way he plays football. He's their middle linebacker, number 35, I believe. He just he runs sideline to sideline. I think he's a very athletic, big linebacker. I don't think he's just the uh, the old school type of linebacker, the hitter. He just he can move side to side. He runs from sideline to sideline. Yeah, and and I'm just this is just a question that I like to ask because uh, I know it's different for everybody. But how has the pre-draft process been for you? I mean, is it something that you um, you know constantly think about every day? You wake up and you set goals for yourself, and you go out and you keep in mind the whole time that you're working towards this NFL draft, or do you more just take it one day at a time and don't uh, really put too much pressure on yourself to do anything differently uh, than you've been doing? Um, really, I, I just, I leave it all in God's hands, to be honest. It really hasn't stressed me out as bad as I thought it would have been. I think more before deciding to come out of school and choosing the agent was more stressful than it is now. Um, I just, I put it all in God's hands. I believe it's his plan is the greatest plan. It's no better plan than his. And so, I mean. I go every day wanting to win every day, really. I mean, I, I really don't know what else to tell you. I'm, I lost the word just thinking God has a plan for me. That's all I live by. Absolutely. Yeah, 100%, man. And, you know, you had a pretty awesome pro day experience uh, from the outside looking in. Um, so I want to get your take on, you know, how that was for you, you know, obviously going through all that and having an event that, I mean, I guess, you know, obviously you have your teammates and, and whatnot that are part of it, um, you know, the certain teammates that are part of it. But it's also a pretty big day just for you in general. So, you know, what is that whole experience like for you? Just... After not getting the combine invite, it was kind of one of those things. Uh, I got something to prove. Uh, I should have been there. It was ridiculous, by the way. <laughs> it, it was really just uh, let me get this chip off of my shoulder. Let me just show them how much of an athlete I was. And I think I kind of rose past the moment to where I was too angry during pro day, and I was trying to do my best as best. And so – some of the things like my broad jumping, my vertical, I wasn't happy with, or my bench, I wasn't very happy with. I could have did better in my 40, but my my worst day was still better than some of people's best day. And so, I mean, it was it was great for me. I was happy to be back with all my teammates. I mean, I've been training with a lot of different guys from different teams, and it was great then. But then to be able to perform one last time with all of my teammates. And that was the best feeling, really. We had fun out there. It wasn't no pressure. I mean, I was just happy to have fun and show that I'm the best running back in the draft. For sure. And, you know, what, in your opinion, is your biggest strength as a player? My biggest strength is to be able to make the first guy miss, always. 
my dad has always told me that's one thing that I should focus on is making the first guy miss. And he used to pay me when I was a kid five dollars for scoring a touchdown and I always had to make the first guy miss I mean back then when I was a little kid you just expect the fastest guy to outrun everybody my dad wanted me to make one guy miss at least and go score I love that the five dollars a touchdown that oh, yeah. that is cool um it, with that being said you know what's one area that you're looking to improve in one area, um, my pass blocking. I mean, that's probably the biggest knock that I get is my pass blocking. It's not that I don't want to do it, or uh, I don't I don't put my face in there. It's I'm not sure when to engage or way back and not let him juke me out into where I lunge. I mean, I'm strong enough to do it. A weight room stuff speaks for itself, but once I'm taught the correct way. Like an old lineman, it's over with. What would you describe your style um, as, as a running back? And what is a team getting from you at that running back position, in your opinion? I believe I'm an every down back. I believe I can play first, second, third, fourth down if you need me to. Is that being special teams? Uh, I'm a slasher with power. I can be that elusive back. I can get the short yardage. I mean, I don't, I don't step in the weight room for no reason. It's not checking the box for me. I'm getting work done in the weight room, and I try to have that show on the field. Um, the team will get from me, the guy that's coming to work. I mean, I'm coming to work every day. It, it's not about the money for me. It's really I love this game, and I've been doing it all my life. If it was about the money, I would have quit a long time ago. I've been playing this game for free for too long. <laughs> so... I love this game. Uh, I plan to help win a Super Bowl, and I, at the end of my career, I want to go with Jackets. That's certainly the right mindset to have, but who is someone you mold your game after? Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, Jarek McKinnon. He was quarterback at Georgia Southern and ended up going to Minnesota Vikings in the third round. Uh, he's definitely a player. I mold my game after in the weight room. I mean, his combine numbers, just that was my main goal. I wanted to be everything he did. And, I mean, just the way he plays football, that's who I see myself as in the NFL. And that's who I hope to mold my game after, just how he's cut himself out, a huge role in the NFL. Yeah, that's awesome. And we, we kind of like to ask uh, when we get the guys uh, who come on our show, we like to ask fun questions. And uh, this is just kind of a fun, um, you know, kind of situation. But who would you most want to juke by to score a game-winning touchdown in the NFL? Oh, uh, Bobby Wagner. I mean, he former Utah State linebacker, played for the Seahawks. Name one of the best in the game right now. I would love to do that. Just give Utah State some fun to watch and the NFL. I mean, I'd love to do that. Considering Bobby Wagner, somebody that only gave up, you know, one missed tackle, <laughs> you know, I think that would be a pretty good, um, yeah. you know, pick to have. But um, yeah. no, that, that's awesome, obviously, because he went to Utah State as well. And, uh, you know, I could see it happening, but it's not going to be easy. But with that being said, you know, Bobby Wagner does play against uh, the Rams. We are a Rams podcast, so I have to ask you, have you met with the Los Angeles Rams yet? I have not met with them. I've talked to an area scout from the Rams, but I have not met with them. Well, we certainly like to hear you've at least talked to the scout uh, because, oh, yeah. you know, <laughs> We, we would love to see you end up a Ram, but uh, we definitely will be a fan of you no matter where you go. I mean, Jake and I are such big fans, and we really appreciate you coming on the show and taking time out of your busy schedule to talk to us. And, you know, just to wrap it up, in your words, who is Darwin Thompson as a player and who is he as a person? Uh, Darwin Thompson is a God-fearing man. As a player, I put my heart into this. I mean, that's who I'm known as. I try to create a different identity outside of football. But Darwin Thompson is a football player. That's who I've been all my life. Uh, I do this for the man above, and I try to show that the steps that I'm walking is God's plan. 
I mean, he guides my steps, and I'm just, I'm just here for the ride, really. Hey, that's awesome, man. You know, it's been a lot of fun having you on. Uh, you know, I wish you the best of luck. Let's keep in touch and uh, stay healthy. Yes, sir. Thank you. I appreciate you guys having me on. All right, guys. Joining the show, we have Fordham cornerback Dylan Mabin. How's it going, man? Thanks so much for coming on. Going pretty good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. We're excited to talk to you. And just to start this thing off, uh, the first question that we have is, how old were you when you started playing football? And kind of how did that come to be? Um, I started playing football I was in third grade. So I think I was about six or seven years old. Um, I had an older brother who was like, at the time he was in high school and he was, he was like the town hero. So like, I kind of was just born into it really. And I really wanted to do it even when I was that young and it just fit perfectly. Yeah, you know, that's awesome. Um, was there a player, you know, back in the day uh, that you really looked up to growing up, you know, maybe in the NFL? Uh, Terrell Owens. He was probably my favorite player since I was, like, in first grade. Like, I had his jersey. I would wear it to school all the time. I remember he was my favorite player. That's awesome. He definitely was an interesting player and, and a great one at that and a guy who uh, – Definitely, I know a lot of people looked up to and wanted to style their game after, for sure. But, you know, you grow up, and it's time for you to play, uh, you know, football in college. What made you choose Fordham? Well, when I was making my decision, I wanted to not only go to a school that had a good football program, but I wanted to go to a school that had strong academics because I didn't want to base my decision completely on trying to get to the NFL. You know, the NFL is not going to last forever. So I just wanted a place that could give me options in case that didn't happen. And Fordham was the best place that could do that for me. Yeah, I I love that answer. Um, You know, I was uh, was doing some research on you, and um, I think I saw that there was an interview with you where someone asked you who you'd want to bring back dead or alive, and and you said Albert Einstein. I thought that was very intriguing and kind of, uh, you know, kind of just, delved a little bit into your mind and you know how it's not just all about football it seems like you're a very intelligent um you know person and everything um you know kind of going back to to football of course you know you played in almost every single game uh you know in college and i think that's really huge because you you, everyone has their own story um some guys will red shirt some guys will not red shirt and they'll play the whole time you played the whole time and and you played valuable snaps um you ended up being a first team all patriot um you know conference player so that you know that was huge so you know i want to you know get your thoughts on your overall career and and how well do you think it, it worked out for you Oh, I felt like it worked out great. Um, as a freshman, you know, the league that we're in, they actually don't allow you to redshirt. So as a freshman, there's, like, no incentive to not go as hard as you can and try to get on the field as quick as you can. So as a freshman, I was just trying to get some uh, snaps any way I could, special teams, whether you're uh, in the secondary, uh, any way I could. And that happened, and it really laid the foundation for the years upcoming because I had gotten those valuable reps when I was younger. So when I got older, I wasn't like that. So overall, it was a great time. That's awesome. And, you know, certainly, uh, as Jake mentioned, you uh, had a great college career. But do you have a favorite moment or a favorite play or a favorite game that you played in from your time at Fordham? Um, Let me think. Favorite game? My favorite game was probably my freshman year, first game of the year. We, um, We played FBS team Army. And, you know, we're FCS, so we're clearly the underdogs. And we beat them 37-35, I think. And just that feeling of being in a stadium with 20,000, 30,000 people and knocking them off, it was just an indescribable feeling. That that was probably my favorite game. Yeah, that's, you know, that's awesome, of course. And I want to get your thoughts, because um, one of your former teammates is actually in the NFL, uh, Chase Edmonds. Um, are you, like, close with him at all? And, and was he, like, kind of a mentor to you or anything like that? Or, were you know, are you too buddy-buddy? Like, how, how does that work out, you know, seeing him come from Fordham as well and go to the NFL? Oh, yeah, we're definitely good friends. Um, when I was at Fordham, you know, he was kind of the person that – helped instill just the next work ethic, the next level that I needed to achieve. Because when you get to college, everybody's going to work hard. But 
there's always that next level you can tap into. And Chase actually helped me really tap into that level, you know, putting in extra hours, extra work, anything that I needed to do, whether that's stretching at 8 p.m. or going to the calf at 8 p.m. to get an extra meal. You know, he really helped instill um, those extra values in me, which helped prepare me for now. Absolutely. Uh, and, you know, you played against a lot of tough players in college. You had a lot of tough opponents. Is there any one guy who you played against in college that, uh, you would say is the toughest player that you had to go up against? Um, I know one receiver from Penn, Justin Watson. He's now with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, I think. He was hes probably one of the best receivers I went up against. Um, Reggie White Jr. from Monmouth, he was also really good. He'll be in the league next year. Those two are probably the top like receivers I played against and guarded personally. Yeah, it's funny you mentioned Justin Watson. I had a, the opportunity to interview him last year at the uh, the Senior Bowl. Um, so, I mean, he's definitely somebody that's up there, and, and a lot of people have mentioned him as you know one of the tougher guys they've gone up against. Um, you know, moving forward, you know, you had your pro day, and you put up some pretty explosive numbers, running you know a four four. Obviously, you measure and you you have the size, um, you have the explosiveness. How do you think your overall pro day went uh, for you? Uh, I felt it went pretty good. Obviously, you know, I felt I could have done better in certain, but that's just me trying to be a perfectionist. You know, I'm never satisfied. But um, I felt like I did good there. You know, position work, I felt it went good. You know, obviously it could be better because everything could be better. But, you know, I'm just looking to keep getting forward for these uh, next next opportunities that I have. Absolutely. And is there anyone that you modeled your game after, any guy that, you watched play maybe as, as a kid or in high school and you have tried to model uh, the way that you play the game after them? Um, growing up, I would try to model my game after like more lengthy corners. So Richard Sherman definitely was a big influence, just how he's physical pressing at the line of scrimmage or whether he's in zone reading and just how smart he is. Um, Akeem Tlaib was another one. I may not have like the mental just ferociousness of both of them. I mean, I'm not out there just – talking up a storm but at the end of the day i like to play i like how they play their game and that's who i model my game after this yeah you know i i think those are two great picks um two guys i think could end you know could end up in canton so um definitely not bad picks there um I want to ask you, you know, being, you know, FCS player and, and being a guy that I think is being overlooked, um, you know, what do you feel you bring to the table that maybe another corner that is higher, you know, rated than you in the draft or whatever um, doesn't bring to the table? I feel I bring um, a good combination of size and speed, but I also feel like I'm just very versatile. You know, I'm not just going to be an outside corner who – can only guard one position, one receiver, you know. I played safety, I played corner, I can do any special teams, whether that's covering kicks or punts or uh, kick return, returning or blocking. You know, I feel like I'm just very versatile, and my high football IQ helps me be like that. So I think I can bring that to a team. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, to kind of touch on that, what would you say is your biggest strength as a player? As a player, um, I feel like just being a man-to-man, you know, in college, I had, I think, three different coordinators, but one thing that we that all of them did was we played a lot of man-to-man, so I feel like I can match up with anybody, you know, I have the speed to run, I have the, um, I have the size to match up with big receivers, you know, I'm quick, I can match up with small receivers, so I feel like I'm just very versatile in that manner uh, as well. Yeah, and, and what do you think is, you know, one area that you feel like you need to improve in? Um, I always felt like I could get better in zone. You know, we, just, we didn't play as much zone um, in certain schemes as we did in others. So I feel like just running different coverages, you know, I understood them, but I just feel like if I get more reps, you know, I could always improve in that uh, in that regard. And this is when we have guys in the show, we like to ask some fun questions just to kind of uh, pick your brain and get to know you a little bit better. But what what wide receiver would you most want to cover in the NFL? Uh, probably Julio Jones, just because he was one of my uh, 
when I was in high school, he was probably my favorite player because back, that's back when I used to play receiver. So I was watching all his highlight tapes and everything, and I always thought he was just like the greatest thing ever. So I think it'd be cool to match up against him, see what he's about. Yeah, it's definitely not a bad pick. Julio Jones is one of the best in the game, and I think that'd be a lot of fun to watch. Um, you know, with that being said, you know, which quarterback would you most want to pick off in the NFL? Quarterback? Um, I mean, I feel like it's kind of cliche, but I'd probably say Tom Brady just because he's <laughs> the GOAT at this point. So I feel like that would just be a, like a key moment in my career if I could say I picked off the greatest quarterback ever. Of course, that's certainly a popular answer uh, for quarterbacks that guys want to pick off. And, it, you know, it's definitely tough to pick him off. So it certainly would be an accomplishment, as you said. And, uh, you know, this is a Los Angeles Rams uh, podcast. We ask every guy who comes on the show, have you met with the Los Angeles Rams? And if so, have you scheduled a private visit or workout with them yet? Um, no, I don't, I don't. I don't. I'm not sure if they were. I don't think they were at uh, my pro day. So I haven't spoken to him yet. I got you. Well, we certainly hope that uh, that you do. And, uh, you know, obviously, Jake and I would love it if you ended up a Los Angeles Ram. But we will for sure be fans no matter where you end up. Uh, you know, we're just big fans of you in, in general. And we wish you the best of luck. And, you know, to wrap this up, you know, in your own words, who is Dylan Maben as a player and who is he as a person? Dylan Maven is a player. He's someone that's going to give you 100% effort, 100% of the time. Um, he's going to put the team's needs before his own. And ultimately, he's a great leader who's going to get the best out of everybody. Hey, Dylan, we love it, man. Uh, you know, keep doing what you're doing. Stay healthy. And, uh, you know, let's stay in touch. And good luck uh, with the NFL draft. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me.